Um, I'd like to tell you a true story that happened many years ago, and it's okay to share now because people in the world are not there anymore, right? <laughs> um, when I was there in the Philippines, there was a, a man who wanted to build a house on an empty lot. So he contracted with another person, you know, a member, uh, an engineer, to build a house. So on that day, first day to build a house, uh, the contractor sent eight laborers on that empty lot with, and the owner was there waiting. And they were, of course, excited. They went there at 7 a.m. in the morning. But there was nothing else, just the laborer. There is no equipment, no tools, no, I'm sure Ken Lamonica understand that for construction. No nothing, no cement, no timber, no net. So these people, or eight people, came, huh? <laughs> and expecting to be paid. So they were waiting, and that, what's going on? And so it's a waste of hours and time. And around uh, 12 noon, a truck came in with all the equipment and the, you know, the, the sand and uh, tools and lumber and all of that. So the eight people unloaded the truck and of course put those things and stuff on the empty lot. But the contractor was still not there. They're still waiting because the contractor was going to rent an equipment and he came around 3 p.m. with what do you call this equipment that digs? Backhoe, with his backhoe. And they had to dig because they had to dig the foundation, but they cannot dig on the empty lot because it's covered by timber, cement, and all of the other stuff. So, so the laborers will have had to remove all of this, put it on the side, and by the time they're done, sunset already came. You know. <clears throat> so as you can see, there was a lot of waste. It came to my attention later on because the two members, the owner and the contractor came and asking, how can we solve this? Who is going to pay? You know, all of this. But, but the point of the story is this. Something went wrong. What was wrong? No planning. That, that's poor planning. That, that's exactly what happened. Uh, because of the poor planning, so there was a lot of waste. Failure to plan. And as you, as you all know, without, without planning properly, you probably won't be able to do much without planning. Now, without detailed planning, you cannot build a house, for example. You know, can you say contractor, you cannot do that. Uh, you cannot build a shopping mall or a city. Uh, you cannot have a church like this, church service, without proper planning. Uh, Greg mentioned for six months, why six months? They've been planning for this conference. So there's that planning. Nothing but the simplest impulse gets accomplished without some forethought. You know, you, you have to take time to, to plan. Now, why am I you know, saying this? All of us know this. Planning is important. Even if you want to eat a good dinner, right? You have to plan because you wanted to invite people as guests to your house. Okay, hey, why don't you have dinner and I'm going to cook adobo or what? They come to our house or what? And then when you start cooking, oh, we don't have the chicken or <laughs> we don't have the soy sauce. We don't have the vinegar. I mean, you know, Adesani is a cook. Uh, so he knows that you need to plan and have those ingredients so as not to waste time. So we practice this. We know this in relation to having a successful uh, provision for whatever needs we have, we need to plan. We, we know that we need, we need to take steps to see that we have everything we need, clothes to wear, I mean, vacation to go to. I mean, you go to vacation, right? Do you plan for a vacation? Of course you do. I mean, if you go out there and you don't plan really well, and you go arrive at the airport and say, oh, we don't have our passports. We, we don't, you know. So you plan. We plan very seriously. That's a given. So that we'll be happy. We'll be successful. So the question I'd like to ask is this. 
While we put so much desire, so much for thought, so much plan and time and energy to plan to have a better house, a better college career, bigger bank account, uh, better health. When we, we spend all this time, while we take that and plan it, do we apply the same earnest, the same desire, the same passion so that we can have a better relationship with God so that we can become instead of having a better house be a better person be a better husband or wife be a better whatever it is that you are involved with and you may ask me uh, Burmi are you saying that we need some kind of planning even for our spiritual lives? I'm glad, Mike Delotto, you asked the question. <laughs> yeah? no, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, the same forethought that we, we usually spend with having a great vacation, sometimes when it comes to having something better spiritually, we don't have. So today I'd like to persuade us to set aside time, energy, forethought, this year and the years to come, to specifically plan your life, not just to have better health, better house, better career, better account, but to have the most important aspect of life, a better relationship with God. I mean, have you thought about it? I mean, it's something that I want us to think about it's kind of, as we start, you know. How can I have a better relationship with my wife, with my children, with, with God? Because the thing is, in the same principle, I think, if we don't do any planning, if we don't, don't put any desire or forethought on it, like in building that house, it will be a mess or... Most likely nothing will happen, right? If we don't plan on becoming better in our relations, this is more personal, I'm thinking about not just the things that we can do, but to become that person. If we don't even think about it, it will be the same old, same old thing every year, the same thing, and we just probably will find ourselves getting old and nothing much is happening when God even says in the Bible, grow in grace and in knowledge. Now, some of us might say, that's legalism, Burmi. Well, let's look at the scriptures and see what I'm trying to say here, that God does plan himself. That Jesus Christ himself made some plans. So I think God, you know, the Spirit of God says that, that one of the works of God is that he works within us. You know, you as a person, God works within you, and I think God wants to enter into our hearts, enter into our lives, and he wants to begin and continue the work that he does. But sometimes, perhaps when he enters our hearts, he finds things in there that should not be there. Clutter, rocks and timber and, you know, things that makes it more challenging for God to work because the heart probably is in disorder or the heart is not willing or is not ready for God. It's not ready for Him. So the way I hope to motivate us is to give us just four examples from the Bible. One, an illustration from Proverbs. Two, this is from the Apostle Paul, who is planning. Three, from the great God who plans. And forth from Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 7. Proverbs 6, 6 to 7. It says, Go to the ant. No, there's still a tiny insect. <laughs> go to the ant, O oh sluggard. Sluggard. What's a sluggard? <laughs> Lazy. Lazy bone. Lazy bone. You know, the word sluggard comes from slugs. <laughs> use nails, you know, that's what I say. Go to the ant, you sluggard. 
Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her food in summer and gathers her sustenance in harvest. So the ad that is being mentioned here is an example not just of the hard work, fast hard work that it's doing, but there's something to consider. And it says here is that in, when you consider this, that's wise, godly wise, biblically wise. And what is that that we need to consider about the ant? What does it do? Planning. Planning. Now, of course, uh, you know, don't ask me about do they think. You know, I'm sure. uh, God is using the ant as a metaphor, and it's almost like they are thinking the way they're planning. You know, it's instinct, I realize that. But they have this ability to, to prepare, to plan. And God says, planning is being wise. And it is biblical. Proverbs 15.22. If you go to Proverbs 15.22. <clears throat> Without counsel, plans go wrong. But with many advisors, they succeed. So God shows that, you know, of course, when you counsel, like you want to do something, okay, you want to start a project, and then you realize, wait a minute, I think this will be better accomplished because I have my own thinking, I have my own strength, but of course we have our own weaknesses. So the Bible tells us wisely that part of wise planning is counseling. With many advisors, when we get different points of view, some that may even be contrary to ours, that's good. It says that's success. He's saying that counseling, when added to planning, gives you a better chance of success. Those who plan without counsel often fail. You know, if we are, if we are into that habit. So there is the need for others. Uh, I'm learning that more and more. Um, Greg included us with this uh, leadership uh, video conference with other pastors and I'm learning that each of us are kind of uniquely natured by God. We are all uniquely nurtured by our environment, by our teachers, and we have uniqueness. And it's good to see other people's points of view and then we can arrive to a better decision. So the wisdom of planning is often taken for granted by people. Now, if you're single and you want to get married, we have what we call premarital counseling. That's part of planning, you know, seek counsel. So a much better advice is not only to get advice from wise people, but also to include God. You know, go to God in planning. Now this is a scripture that I love to show. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Proverbs 16, verse 3, it says here, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Your plan, your ministry, your role as a husband or wife, you know, this is mine, and I'm excited I'm, because I'm so bright. I have a lot of bright ideas, whatever, you know, <laughs> that may come, and, and we forget what God is saying is, no, you know, when you plan, make sure that it's not, it's not yours, it's, it's God's. Make sure that you commit that. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Include God in the picture. Whatever we are tasked to do, say, God, I, I've done my part, I'm doing my part here, but I commit this to you because I don't know everything. I mean, do we know everything? There's so many things happening and we don't know everything, we don't know all the facts, but sometimes we have to make decisions in life. Are you agree? There are times when you have to make decisions in life and you don't have much time, but you have to make that decision anyway because you're the parent and the child is waiting for your answer, or you're a counselor and they're waiting for you, or you're a whatever leadership position, and you have to make a decision. So what God is saying, you know, commit your plan to the Lord. And then your plan is going to be established. So there's, there's that. From Proverbs, we see that planning is wise. Getting counsel is wise. And commit that. Involve God. 
after all, even everything that we do belongs to God. So, how can you plan in such a way that what you produce will have abiding value and not just like pass overnight? You know, how, how can we be sure that it has more success? Proverbs tell us. And most importantly, I want to repeat, <clears throat> committed to the Lord. Do you have a ministry committed to God? Do you plan to travel committed to God? You plan to have a vacation committed to God? Do you plan to build a house? Commit that to God. Do you plan to have children? Oh. Yes, of course. Right? Commit that to God. Are you going to apply for a job and you want to commit that to God? Are you going to visit somebody? Commit that to God for His glory. It's not for us, right? It is for His glory. I have all these plans, but I, I want to surrender it to you. I want to commit this to you for your glory, for God's glory. That, that's the reason for His glory. After all, our theme you know, for the year is life together. That's our theme for the year and it does include life together with God. That's our, you know, so include God in everything we do. You want to go to school, commit that to the Lord. Commit that. And let's include God. Well, does God include us in His plan? Yeah, of course, right? We are all included in God's plan. Should we not include Him in ours? Should we not include Him in our families, relationship? Of course. So, that, that's what we get from Proverbs. Now, let me continue. <clears throat> so, careful planning is part of what makes a person wise and successful. Um, the, it says there that um, we, we give this to God. And of course, we know that God is ultimately in charge. Uh, notice in Proverbs 16, verse 9, it says, Proverbs 16, 9, Although we understand that we need to plan, although we understand that we need to counsel and of course commit that to God, Proverbs 69 says, A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So we have to understand that. That's, it's God ultimately. But the fact that God, that our Lord is ultimately in control of the future, does not mean that we don't plan. Of course we know. He is in control. It only means that we commit. Plan, that's wise. But commit your work to the Lord and trust Him to establish our plans according to His glorious purpose. For His glory. Let us go to number two, Apostle Paul. Let me just use one scripture here. Romans 15, verse 20 to 28. <coughs> Romans 15, 20 to 28, uh, Paul says here, I make it my ambition, verse 20, I make it my ambition, this is Paul speaking now, this is the apostle, he says, I make it my ambition or my desire, my, my plan to preach the gospel. I mean, Paul says, I, I, I want, this is my plan, and my plan is, one, I want to preach the gospel. But notice what Paul says. Not where Christ has already been named. Whoa. The apostle Paul has a plan to reach people who have not been rich. That, that is his ultimate, his, his goal. But it, it has to be a plan because if Paul doesn't plan anything, God called him and he just goes to the cave and says, mm, you know, nothing will happen. So he said, I have a plan, and my plan is to reach the, those who have not been rich. To preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on another man's foundation. So Paul's desire here, you know, I keep adding our theme, life together. He wants to include in his life the people of the world out there. He wants to include them just as God wants to include them into his own life together with God. 
He desires to connect with people who don't know Jesus. I think about that, you know, wow. Is, is that something I should plan? That I, what, have I been doing that? Maybe I should become a better evangelist. Maybe I should, how do I better reach people? I mean, Paul planned that he knew his life is not about himself alone. I mean, that's who we are. He knew that his life is not just to be spent on his own, but that he, he wants to spend his life to other people. So his plan was just to do that. To share the gospel to those who have not heard it. Then continuing he said, But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, wow, and again, life together, Paul has a plan to reach the lost, to reach them, but then he also says, Oh, I, I have this longingness to go back to the church, you know, come to you. I, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be spared on my journey there by you. And once I have journeyed your company for a little, see, the Apostle Paul valued sharing his faith, but he knew his life together with the church folks, with the disciples, was also precious. He was speaking here. I I'm going to do this work. You know, I'm, I'm going to, this is my plan. I'm going to work. I'm going to do this, but I want you to know that I miss you. you know, I, I still want to be with you. He values church, church life, being together with, with members. I long to be with you, he said. I long to be with you. I, you know, he remembers the time he talked to the people, had fun, had potlucks after church, you know, did the rose parade. No, um, whatever it is, right? He remembers whatever we remember. I mean, there's something about the church I think that we have to go back to. Because God is showing us here too that the life together has, has a value that we are losing. So a lot of people, not only within our denomination, but a lot of churches, uh, we have become so cognitive, you know, mental. We want to be so pure in our theology, such that if we disagree only in one point of theology, out we go. We want to go and find another. We want to be perfectly in unity with doctrine. And then we get lost because there is no denomination that has a monopoly of what is really perfect theology. And we put so much low priority on the importance of relationship, family. Mm -hmm. Can we not be united in love mm -hmm. even if we don't agree? My wife will agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, do, my wife, do we agree in all things? Of course not. Do we love each other? Of course we do. Do I abandon her because she doesn't like green mango? Of course I don't. You know, you know what I mean? I value that just because I may not agree with certain points of theology doesn't mean that I have to get away. Because to me, relationship is important because after all, when we're with God and when God gives us the mind or spirituality and so forth, we can understand all the theology. You know, I get it. I get it, God. At that time, I didn't know, but now I get it. You see what I mean? So the relationship is important. The theology and all the details, we strive hard. I'm not saying we don't. In fact, we should grow in grace and in knowledge. But it should not be a point of division just because of misunderstanding. So Paul is saying that, oh, I long to be with you. And if you know his story, there's a lot of disagreements, you know, with Paul and all those people. And then he said, at present, however, I'm going to Jerusalem with, with aid for the saints. So he's, that's his plan. <coughs> when therefore I have completed this and have delivered to them what has been raised, I shall go on by way of you to Spain. So he said, on my way to Spain, this is his plan. On my way to Spain, I will pass by you. He was mindful of his ministry, but mindful of the church. That's all part of his plan. And uh, life together for Paul is very important. It was part of his plan. 
together to invite to include the lost and also with with members of the church and uh, doctrine is very important but when you study the life and teachings of Paul and that culture they all did not agree in everything but Paul is saying that we can be together united in Christ that's our unity united in love so Paul planned that but you know what it didn't happen exactly as Paul planned it. He wanted to go to Spain, but he was not able to, according to, right, Paul? I mean, Mike, I mean, he didn't reach Spain. He, he was captured and he was going, he became a prisoner. So his plan, you know, he has this great plan. Oh, I'm going to Tarsus, I'm going to Spain, what? I'm going, but it didn't work. But the good thing about it is that when we have a plan and then we commit it to God, and then God interrupts that plan because it is His. And it still works. I mean, just because of that, I mean, now we have the book of Romans. <laughs> you know, things change and God was able to work it out. You know, to those who love God, you know, you don't have to worry. All things will work together for good. Sometimes some plans don't happen the way they are. So here it is. With, you, know, God, you know, here we Paul has planned. But even though, that, even though he understood that ultimately it's God's decision, he still planned. And I'm just glad when, <clears throat> before I was born, I'm the, I'm the youngest of five boys. My parents planned for a girl. Because there were like four boys ahead of me. They planned for a boy. They prayed hard. There was no ultrasound at the time, so there was no way we have to find out. They, they, they bought girls clothes. Girls clothes. They prayed to God. They committed that to God. And then the time came, November 23, 1957. I came out. It's a boy. Not according to their plan. They were disappointed, but I was happy. Because I'm here, you know. I mean, things may not happen the way it's planned, but it's committed to God, and my parents accepted that uh, things move on. So, uh, you know, you plan, if things don't change as it is, so be it. As in the case of the Apostle Paul here. It didn't happen, but God, you know, worked it out. So let me go on to God himself. Uh, <clears throat> The ultimate reason for planning is that God is a God who plans. Have you heard of the, word, the term, the master plan of salvation? I wonder why they call it master plan of salvation. Right, that has been done even before. It's the very nature of God. The plan of God is his own nature. Actually, it is because of him. Um, so God has that plan. I don't think it is even possible to conceive a God who does not act according to his own planning. So, there is no option B. God had a plan, I mean, what did it say? That even before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Oh, that, that was God's plan. I mean, that even makes me think that that, you know, was in the scripture because God has already foreseen the future. God has already foreseen you and I, you and all of us, that none of us are accidents. It never happened where the angels would say to God, oh, oh God, uh, who is this Brian Spurgeon here? And God says, oh, I don't know. It's not. He checked the book of life and I don't see Brian Spurgeon in my book, you know. He just happened by accident. God doesn't, you know, do that. Maybe it's, I'm sorry, Brian. I love you. <laughs> Brian, you are part of the plan of God. You, you are not an accident. God knew you before you were born. You were that special. And so is everybody who is here. God had, had that plan. Um, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, on the cross, he said, Tetelestai, it is finished. What, what is finished? When he said, it is finished. What was finished? What is it? A plan. A plan. The, the, the plan of God. Yeah? Right? It is accomplished. It is done. So that's God. And even as far as history is concerned, historians 
tell us that that before Christ's birth, before the building of the New Testament church, their ministry, the spreading of the gospel, the way civilization happened from Babylonian to Persian to Greek to Roman, all of that has been according to God's plan to prepare fertile a fertile ground to prepare a place for Christ's coming, for the church to move on, for the gospel to be preached because there's a culture, because there are Roman roads, because there's this Greek language, all this culture. So it was all part of the plan of God. You and I, therefore, I believe, not only from a bigger scope, you are here. It's all part of God's plan. You know, it's kind of difficult to imagine, but I think... Um, you have a special role in the plan of God. You and I, all of us have a special role in the plan of God. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, that was read by Marian. It says, I am God and there is no other. I mean, that's simple, right? How many gods are there? One God. Are there pagan gods? Nothing. Sometimes we think, oh, there's this god of this, uh, you know, religion, this god of... No, 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 no. No, nothing. You know, all other gods are mythology. There is only one theology, the right theology, and there's only one god. All the others of rocks and stone and all of that, that's, that's not... So, uh, God has made... Uh, it says that God uh, has made us known that he is the only God. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. So that's God. He has a plan. I don't have time to go through this, but Ephesians 1, 9 to 10 also says that in Christ, there's a plan for the fullness of time. Christ is the plan. And he has made full that plan to unite things in him, things in heaven and on earth. That plan is to bring all of us in a life together with God, accomplished by Jesus Christ. Not by our plans, actually, but by his own plan. So God did that. If God has a great plan for you... Should we not also include him in our plans for our families, in our jobs, in our relationship with him? Should we not? Now, in the same way, Jesus, which I don't have to go. Now, the fourth one is Jesus. Luke 9, verse 51. <clears throat> when the days grew near for him to be received, up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem because he knew of that plan. Remember when there was the uh, miracle in Cana? Uh, Mother Mary says to Jesus, Hey, Jesus, do you make some wine? And what did Jesus say? Not yet. Oh, I don't think it's according to plan. You know, the hour is not yet. No? Uh, Mary, uh, I think the time is not yet. You know, it's not. A... But he did it anyway because he loved his mom. So, so there was a plan. Jesus was aware of that plan, and uh, Christ, you know, fulfilled that plan. So, <clears throat> very specifically, in conclusion, my plea to you and to me this day, and I hope we will talk about it in our families, even tonight, is that you take the time to plan the most important aspect of your life. And that is your relationship with God. Not just how to have a better career or a better house, you know, better car, but how do I better my relationship with God? And it's not through what we can do. You know, it is through our understanding of who God is and, and worshiping Him and, and going to God. You know, because it is Him that does the work, but at least we respond to that invitation. So plan. Plan on how you're going to spend time with God. How is, how is your time with God? 
You want it to be better this time? You want to deepen? Not just spending the time, but how do I deepen and, and strengthen my relationship my, with my father? Talk about it. Talk to your wife. How, you know, maybe your prayer life? Um, what plans do you have to be a better husband, better wife, a better Christian? Maybe start to think about uh, what, what plans do you have so you can be involved in, our, in a church ministry. Because life is not just about me or about us, but it is the church. You know, we are part of the church and, and I think God is glorified. God is given glory when we participate in what other Christians do. Because we are the body of Jesus Christ. So, to be a better mom, I mean, what can we do? What, what plans do we have? Not just all of those physical things, but to become really a better child of God. Now, I don't want to, you know, life is not like com compartmentalized where, okay, this berm is life. There is this berm is spiritual life. There is this berm is entertainment life. There is Burmese on Tuesday, biking life. <laughs> there is this. No, that's not. There's one life of Burmese in Christ. You know? And we need to plan to include Jesus in all aspects of our lives. To bring Jesus in the kitchen. To bring Jesus in the bedroom in all aspects of life. I mean, because it does glorify God. So... Um, I, th I think that God is interested in your life. He is interested in how will you be involved with Him in prayer and how are you involved in church. How is your health? I mean, I'm probably I'm going a little bit stretched here, right? Health. What about taking care of our health, our body? Uh, does that glorify God when we plan on being healthy? Of course it does. When the Bible does say that this... This is the temple of the Spirit of God, and so we need to take care of that, right? So I think that's, that's something that we can think about, a plan on these things. And uh, I don't think it's necessarily being legalistic. It's not, but it is our response. It's our gratitude to who God and what God is doing in our lives. To include Him, to plan our lives so He is given the glory. You know, I don't know how I, I try my best to explain it. You know, do you get what I'm trying to say? It's a simple thing, you know, because we, we plan so hard on physical things to be happy, like going on a vacation. But I just want us to consider planning for a better, to become a better child of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the scriptures that you have inspired to be written. Thank you, Lord, that you have, from the very beginning, even before that, that you have included us in your plan. And now that you have shown this to us, that you are a God who planned for our joy, may we respond, Lord, where we too will include you, that you be a part, as we are in Christ, that we will also be in you, and that you will be in us, in all aspects of our lives. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Yeah.